Good afternoon. A big weather pattern change is coming by the middle to the end of January, which will trigger big time Arctic outbreaks potentially for the Midwest, for the Northern Plains and the Great Lakes, followed by a risk for very heavy snowfall and big snowstorms across much of the deep south, the southeast, and even for the eastern seaboard and out across the northeast. So in this update, who's going to get impacted and how big will the impacts actually be for your location, we'll be discussing and breaking that down in today's update. But before we do get talking about that big pattern change coming by the second half of January, let's address the severe weather first for the Midwest and the deep south because this is where there is a risk for tornadoes tomorrow into Saturday. So looking at the HRRR model here, which stands for High Resolution Rapid Refresh, we can clearly see where the rain is falling this afternoon across Missouri into parts of Arkansas, as well as into Illinois and Iowa with a little bit of that snow on the northern side, but the expanse of that has actually come down a little bit. So we're not as concerned about the snowy side of things with this first impulse of active weather. But as we go um, into the day tomorrow, this is for Friday morning, we can see where the cold front here is. It's moving into central Mississippi, into Alabama, central Tennessee, into Kentucky, as well as Ohio. But it's really going to be into uh, when we get into tomorrow afternoon when things are going to get a bit more interesting. A second surface slope get, is going to develop down here across Texas. And out ahead of it, we have this lifting warm front that is going to lift to the north. And with that, we're going to have isolated to scattered discrete storms that do fire up here. You can see over Louisiana, over M central Mississippi, southern Alabama, you can see that line of discrete storms, maybe even some embedded QLCS type activity. And that's going to be the area that we'll need to really watch closely for the potential for tornadoes tomorrow, maybe even some water spouts coming onshore and the risk for damaging winds with this line. And then as we go into, say, Saturday morning, things will gradually taper off as this line generally moves off towards the east. And then, of course, I wanted to show you all the NAM model, the 12 Z output showing again that line weakening with eastward extent as it turns into more stratiform rainfall. When we look at the latest Storm Prediction Center, this was just released not too long ago, and you can clearly see there is a slight risk for severe weather stretching across Louisiana into Mississippi and Alabama. This includes for southeastern Arkansas, and this is not just your weak end or basically your low end slight risk. This is actually a multifaceted hazard like slight risk. First of all, we have a 5% risk for tornadoes across Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama. So there will be a risk for EF1, EF2 plus tornadoes potentially. I don't think we'll see any strong tornadoes in this environment like we were thinking yesterday. But wouldn't be surprising if we have like uh, an isolated EF2 tornado on the higher end scale in some locations here within that 5%. Not only that, there's also a 15% non-SIG for damaging winds. That is wind gusts up to 65 miles an hour with these thunderstorms with surrounding it a 5% risk for damaging winds into Tennessee, Kentucky, stretching into central and eastern Texas followed by a 5% risk for large hail. So a, a hail's not really going to be a big threat with this one because of how super saturated the atmosphere is. We don't got a lot of dry air, a lot of cold air aloft to support that hail growth zone. And so quarter size hail is going to be the common thing with any storm that develops in this environment across central eastern Ten uh, Texas, almost had Tennessee there, Louisiana, Mississippi, and parts of Alabama and southeastern Arkansas. So now that we talked about the severe weather forecast for Friday into Saturday for the deep south and parts of the southeast, let's address the big pattern change that is coming by the second half of January that is going to wreak havoc across much of the the Midwest and the eastern half of the nation, especially east of the Rocky Mountains, where this big weather pattern change is going to also trigger big snowstorms, more frequent snowstorms, and actually get a more active weather pattern going. So here's a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly forecast. And basically this is showing us where heights are above average, where we have lots of ridging in place, where we have below average height lines. That means there's troughing and unsettled weather in place. 
So clearly on this map in the next three days, we have a nice good deep trough moving into the Great Lakes into the upper Midwest by Sunday morning the 11th day of January. But you see this big ridge over here building in. We also have a ridge over the eastern seaboard. So this is not really a active dynamic weather pattern. A lot of ridging here overspreading much of the United States other than this little low. What's going to end up happening though is as that low departs, this is going to set the stage for a more amplified weather pattern to really get going across the United States. The Greenland block is going to go away, and that's going to be followed by the Hudson Bay low pressure system that is going to drop southward here and really amplify. At the same time, we have this big ridge that is going to be uh, building in across the west. This includes for California, Nevada, into uh, the Pacific Northwest. So if you're thinking about any more rainfall, it doesn't look like it's going to rain anymore um, after we get past Sunday and Monday this coming week for Oregon and Washington, all right? And so that is good news for a lot of you that are tired of the rain. You're actually going to get a break here. But if, for areas like California, Thule fog is going to be another big of an, a big issue that is in the short term for our location on the outside of any rain chances. But look at this. By Wednesday, look at how amplified this pattern is. I mean, come on. Like, seriously, very amplified trough here across much of the Great Lakes into the Midwest. Big time amplified ridge across the east here, or across the west, excuse me. I mean, that's a 588 decameter ridge over central northern California. That is pretty significant. I mean, that is up there near the record books for the strongest uh, upper level ridge like pattern that we have dealt with since at least 2013, 2014. Now, more interestingly, it's just going to amplify on itself. Look at this. I mean, boy, this is very amplified pattern setting up here. Nice, good trough here. Big old fat ridge by Friday and Saturday next week. Not this Friday and Saturday, but Friday and Saturday, the 16th and the 17th of January. So literally in about eight or nine days, we're looking at this pattern change coming. And boy, I'll tell you what. Man, that is one heck of an extreme, extreme weather pattern that the GFS and the Euro are both indicating now. So there is pretty good confidence that this is actually going to be happening by the second half of January. And I'll tell you what, when you look at the models and we'll look at the precipitation forecast, it doesn't look like much is going to happen here. But I will tell you what, we're going to probably be seeing at least one or two extreme snowstorms and blizzard conditions in some parts of the eastern U.S. and the Great Lakes during this time frame. And then look at this. This is going to continue for a while, well into the end or the middle to the end of January. I don't see much of a change coming once this really sets up because of the amplified ridge back west. So now let's take a look here at what this means when it comes to a precipitation forecast or a type of forecast that is. So blue areas indicate lots of snow where it's snowing, green areas where it's raining, and pink and beige colors mean that's where there's mix and ice. So putting this into motion, you can see um, big trough sets up here, but we have to be careful with what goes on down here in the Gulf. If we get a system that rides along the coast here and then pivots up into the northeast, that's where we get big time nor'easters, extreme snowstorms, strong winds, and colder temperatures. All right. So, something to consider here, even so it's not being indicated on the GFS model seven days out, you know, things could change in a paradigm like that. Okay. Something to consider. So, that's what we'll be watching is this big storm right in here. Does this get much closer to the coast and bring a lot of snow here across the southeast into the eastern seaboard and the northeast? We don't know just yet because this is about eight to nine days out from occurring and there's a lot of uncertainties this far out in time. You can clearly see um, the 06Z GFS model wanted a nor'easter for the northeast during the same time frame. The 0Z run from last night wanted even a bigger snowstorm. Look at this. 
So yeah, we really do have to watch this pattern this far out in time for the potential for this system to evolve and just how close it gets will be a lot that we don't know about just yet. But the look, there's a second one that does try to develop here and bring more significant snow for the Great Lakes into the Northeast around the nine to 10 day time frame. So with this very amplified pattern, big ridge out west, big trough out uh, in the Midwest and the East, this is where we get a lot of problems, okay? So that is something that we will be watching in days to come. And then it doesn't look like it's gonna end anytime soon, followed by more snowstorms potentially, and on this model, wants an ice storm for the Midwest and the Deep South. Yeah, okay? So that's what we will be watching for. More active dynamic pattern is coming. So now what about the temperature anomaly forecast? That's going to be a big driver behind this active weather pattern that is actually going to be arriving. So when we look at the anomaly forecast on the GFS, purple and blue colors indicate temperatures below climatological averages. Air, um, any areas in orange, red, and this kind of gray weird color Temperatures are well above the average for this time of the year, okay? So you can see above average temperatures will continue over the next three to five days over the Midwest, but the pattern is going to change thereafter, especially by um, the end of next week into the following week, about the 17th and the 18th of January is when I expect this pattern change to evolve with, look at this, temperatures are gonna get to below average, but even more so as we go into, say, the 21st and the 22nd of January. Look at it. It's coming back in again. Temperatures 20 to 30 degrees below average. And if you think the GFS is on steroids, look at the recent model runs. Still showing some sort of an Arctic outbreak potentially for the Great Lakes and for the northern tier of the U.S., including the European model, which I don't know if that has finished rendering. Yes, it has finished rendering. Yes. So this is uh, finished um, doing its job and you look at more Arctic temperatures are coming. And actually while we're at it, let's take a look here at the precipitation type forecast to see what the European model is actually showing. Oh yeah, this big storm right here. We're gonna watch this one. Again, how close this actually gets to the Eastern seaboard is going to be something that we will have to watch. And then maybe, just maybe, the European model really wants to snore up a big extreme snowstorm by the 22nd and the 23rd of January, which is very far out in time, 360 hours out, but it's something to consider with this type of pattern. Now, really quickly, looking at those air temperatures, um, definitely on the chilly side as we go into day six, day seven, and then it's going to get even colder than that. Look at this. More colder air returning for the Great Lakes and then even more colder air beyond that for the 21st, 22nd, and the 23rd. I think about the 20th and beyond is when things are going to get pretty darn extreme when it comes to both a temperature perspective and a winter storm perspective, perhaps, okay? And this is gonna continue all the way into perhaps um, the 23rd and the 24th with those very cold temperatures. But anyways, that is all that I have for today's weather forecast in terms of that big weather pattern change that is coming for the second half of January. If you did find this video very helpful, detailed, informative, and life-saving, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Please hit that like button. Please share this video with their family and friends on social media. Let's get the word out because once this weather pattern change comes, we're going to be live streaming a lot, I have a feeling, including a lot of video updates, possibly two videos a day since I am going to start full time on YouTube on the 13th of January. That is, I believe, the 13th. Yes. Starting on the 14th of January next week on Wednesday, I will be going full time on YouTube, which means I will be available much more than I am right now. As always, have a great rest of your Thursday on the 8th day of January 2026. I'll be back with you more tomorrow.